Numbers changed in this docu because we got the correct ones with distance apps and altimeters by the end. Please press pause at any time if the subtitles go too fast for you. Recently, I went out to the Salton Sea for a giant flat or globe earth experiment. This is the story of what happened. I came across flat earth maybe a year and a half ago or so, and it wouldn't leave my mind, so I started doing experiments. I did these experiments and I watched the moon every night at 9.30, was shocked at what I saw and learned, and so soon I wanted to develop a, an even bigger experiment where I took my P900 camera down to say a dry lake bed or the sea and just see what I could see over the horizon, if I could see something I shouldn't see on a globe or what was gonna happen. I wanted to have a science group do a peer review on my experiment so that they would consider it to be valid, so I texted someone I know named Spencer Marks because I knew he was part of a group called the IIG West, which is a skeptical science group, and I asked them to review my experiment for possible flaws. Did you know that there is actually a mathematical equation that can show Earth curvature. It goes like this. The Earth curves at approximately 8 inches per mile squared, meaning that every mile that you're looking out, it should curve downwards away from your sight 8 inches at a mile and then square that every mile that you go. This is because every mile out, the curve gets progressively worse because it is harder and harder to see over the curve until it is completely impossible. Very quickly you hit a point where you can see nothing over the curve at all because it's impossible and you are looking a straight eye line out into space. We often use the earth curve calculator and simply input its variables in order to get the math done for us. One of the variables is your eye height because the higher up you are the more earth you should be able to see. So altitude is important in the equations. The second variable is your distance to your target, because the farther you are from your target, the more curve there should be and the more that something should be underneath the curve and not visible to you. Now we used to measure our eye height based on sea level because sea level was always supposed to be the same, but now not only are they saying that sea level is different all over the world, but we are starting to measure distances so far and so great that we might be at low tide in one area and be measuring across the earth to a high tide in another area. But we can also do something else to ensure even more accuracy. What can be done is to test the altitude of where your eye level is in comparison to the eye level of the object you are trying to locate. To explain, if your eye height is at the exact same altitude as an object a hundred miles away that you're trying to see, we would set your eye level height at zero because it should be directly there with your eye if the earth was flat. And even if the earth is a globe, having two items at the exact same altitude ostensibly gains you a new sea level, which you can have at any altitude. Salton Sea is actually below sea level, so we not only used the water of the sea, we also got altitude readings of objects on either side with altimeters in order to get you the most accurate eye height and earth curve calculations possible. Well, at least the Flat Earthers did that, the IIG West not so much. With that explained, let's get back to our experiment on the Salton Sea, shall we? My original idea was to take something with stripes on it, like a piece of cardboard, out to the ocean and tried to film it and see if it would disappear under the curve of the globe or not. Spencer came back at me quickly and said he felt that a dry lake bed would be better without the waves interfering, to which I quickly agreed, as long as we tested the altitude of both the camera and the flag. He also suggested to make the flag giant so that it could be seen at such a long distance. I was very appreciative of such good modifications. He then took it to the IIG West and came back at, with me and said, not only would they like to peer review your experiment, they would actually like to do it with you which I was very excited about. Apparently another man at the group, Ross, had also had the same idea to do the experiment at the same time. So it was synchronicity in my opinion and the experiment was meant to be. Now at this point the IIG West sort of took over and placed the flag back on water and built a balloon that they wanted to lift off the ground from the other shore and see when, at what point, could they see it in their telescope. They brought telescopes and all kinds of stuff. So. They really went all out. I do want to thank them for that. 
Thankfully, the flat earthers that, to their credit, the I IG West invited finally showed up. I was so excited. So now we had flat earthers around and the science group and the experiment was set to go. The first experiment was the IIG West's experiment where they attached a couple of helium balloons that they had constructed to a bar with their logo underneath the bar and they decided to lift, lift it up off of a road um, on the other shore and see when they could see it in their telescopes. Now they claimed that they had caught footage, which we haven't seen yet, that the balloons were invisible until they were raised I think at least 45 feet in the air which proved that the Earth is a globe. To cap it all off, not only did they claim a globe win and that they had proven the globe, but they bullied us on TV and actually called us menaces to society and pseudoscientists. But don't worry, we have a little response for them at the end of this video. Check out what they said about us and our science and scientific theories on the news. It was an unusual gathering at the Sultan Sea this morning. News Channel 3's Jeremy Chan was there and shows us how this is more than just disproving fake science. There's been an increase in belief in the flat earth. One demonstration involved a boat based target with horizontal stripes. We sent the boat out into the water and uh, the farther it goes, the more the stripes disappear. That's meant to prove the curvature of the Earth. Well, the experiments at the Salton Sea were to establish one particular scientific fact. With the rise of fake news and the rise in pseudoscience, this group is trying to make sure that they're able to do their part to stamp it out. So to deny science and to uh, disregard and disrespect science, I think is a very unhealthy uh, thing that goes on in our society. That's a self-selecting group. They're obviously not convinced by all the other evidence that is out there that uh, proves and reinforces the idea of a globe Earth. It will be profiled on National Geographic Explorer later this year. Do you see how ungracious I sound when all I do is return their words aimed at me back at them? Very interesting, but I got that the entire time I was there. If I just said the same things they said to me back to them, I was called ungracious and unkind. So apparently they could do what I cannot. But anyway, moving on. So by this point, the IIG had taken over, claimed a globe win, and made fun of us on the news. Now, we haven't seen the IIG West footage yet, but we are having some major contention with this claim, and here is why. We feel that we proved a flat earth at the exact same time that they were laughing at us. On each side of the Salton Sea was a cliff at about the same elevation. So the IIG West sat on the beach right here. They measured with a tape measure four feet up from the ocean. I watched them do it. And then what they did is they shot their camera straight across the sea to see if they could see these balloons up here or not. Now these balloons were constructed on a road and they floated about 15 feet up from the road and then they walked them down here to the beach and from there they they claimed that they lost visual contact with them and then they launched them up in the air 65 feet and then slowly slowly as the balloons were lifted up to 65 feet in height well over the curve they then appeared and then even more the 25 by 25 foot poster that they had made for the IIG West appeared and they could see it but before that you know, it was it was hidden. So I said, okay, you know, maybe that maybe that happened. Once they got it from the road down to the beach down here, these could have disappeared behind the mirage line and the mirror line. And then as they lifted them up, it became visible past those weird atmospheric disturbances at the horizon. I was like, okay. So I'm thinking, okay, this could have been a globe earth wind, it could have been a flat earth wind. What with the mirror line and the disturbances at the horizon, I can't really I have to just call it invalid experiment, so nobody wins, right? Then I was walking back up from the beach and got to the tables and I found Nathan going frantically crazy trying to tell me something. The teams were having trouble finding the balloons. They had no idea where they were looking. Yeah, they didn't right. have any kind of visual landmark cues or anything to know where exactly we were standing. So I saw that we were struggling. I had a friend over here that had a P90 camera, so I FaceTimed him and I had him zoom his P90 camera across the lake. And we were able, by looking up. So I you found it on the ground with his yes. P90? Yeah. P900? From the other side. <laughs> 
since the balloons were still on the ground, we we're probably about 15 feet off, like the top of the balloons were no more than 15 feet off the yeah. ground. And we were able to locate each other visually with just the P90. What he's explaining is because Josh was standing on a beach cliff approximately the same exact altitude as Capri Road 9.6 miles away, if we put his eye line at 6 feet up for Josh being 6 feet tall, it should be impossible due to the earth curve calculator for Josh to see any of the balloons standing on Capri Road because Capri Road itself, the asphalt, would have been 29 to 30 feet under the earth curve person over here on this side were they able to see the balloons yeah, on the ground he was the one that found them. so they located us they relayed the information where we're at they were able to locate us then we raised the balloons up to i think about 35 or like 40 uh, they they went up and we they did not lose contact when they went up and then as we walked closer to the shore we were probably about 30 maybe like 30 feet from the shore yeah. as we walked closer they said that they can I think they said well if they, they raised it 30 feet. so according to this witness evidence along with the video proof he has of it which is to follow the balloons were clearly visible at an altitude that they shouldn't have been on the road and even from their lower position on the beach the IIG West saw the balloons on the road before they started before the balloons were lifted upwards all of this being impossible on the curve or a globe. To show you how we calculated this, we'd used Google Earth for the altitudes. This little hut is the cliff that Josh was standing on, shooting his camera out over the ocean to the balloons. And you can just look down here at the elevation and it is negative 226 feet above the Salton Sea level. It gets a little confusing because all of the elevations are negative because the Salton Sea itself is negative sea level. Now I understand the sea is evaporating, which is why we decided to go back out there for a retest with an altimeter, but I'm just going to show you here how we came to our conclusions that we needed to retest. The balloons were assembled on Capri Lane at Salton Sea Beach and then lowered and taken down to the beach from there to be re-raised up. Now we discovered that while Josh's elevation of his location was negative 226, the location of Capri Road, the elevation was negative 225. That's only a one foot difference. So in other words, the cliffs on either side of the beach are basically at almost the exact same elevation. Okay, so even though Josh was actually sitting at a picnic table, not standing up, and he was hunched over at about a four feet eye line above the ground, I decided to give the globe the best possible advantage and actually make the eye line height six feet tall as if he was standing up just to give the globe extra advantage. So we placed Josh's elevation at a very generous six feet high and we plugged that into the earth curve calculator for eye height and then the distance from Josh to Capri Road which is where the balloons launched was 9.7 miles so that means the target height which is the road that the balloons were launched from should be 29.9 or 30 feet underneath the curvature of the earth from Josh's vantage point. He should not have been able to see them at all or that road at all. If we calculate from the IIG West's position, it gets even worse for them because they are at an even lower altitude than Josh. So they are at least 15 to 20 feet below Josh's eye line, which means they should have been able to see even less of that road than Josh could. To explain this to you, Josh at his greater heights should be able to see more of the globe and when looking straight ahead would be able to see past the curve more. So it would be more likely to see the balloons and the road than the IIG West who when looking straight out from their eye line would be stuck just purely looking out into outer space. So now let's get this clear. Neither the IIG West nor Josh should have been able to see Capri Road or the balloons on it because their eye lines were going above the balloons according to the earth curve calculator. 
The asphalt of Capri Road was supposed to be 30 feet underneath the curve and the balloons themselves only stretched up halfway of that height, about 15 feet high, leaving 15 more feet of air space. So neither of Josh nor the IIG West should have seen the balloons. And if they did see the balloons while they were sitting on the road, then this proves Earth is flat. Now, do we have proof that the IIG West saw balloons on the road before they lifted them up? Oh yeah, we do. Okay, yeah, okay, so look, look, there's a, there's like, uh, go left, keep going left, bro. Zoom in a little bit. You got someone else here doing it. Are you guys seeing video? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Right. Wait, um, so he's FaceTiming? Uh, he's got a P900 bit? that he's, he's looking at and then putting in FaceTiming the viewfinder. You can see both of them. Perfect. Yep. All right, Josh, help them help them get eyes on us. Keep it exactly where you're at. If, if you've got um, visual on us, keep it exactly where you're at. What? Oh yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. That's totally us. Who who is it? This is Joshua. I know how to find hey, you find Joshua. Okay. Joshua yeah. has seen the balloon. Okay, I'm gonna. All right, Josh. He's 20 or 50 feet away from me. Good job, Nathan. Right on, buddy. <laughs> Well, I know, but he sees where it is, and, and I'm yeah, point yeah, to it, it, and look there. Yeah, go. So how far would you say we're off, up off the water right like now? I'd say 10 feet, maybe? maybe? Yeah, I think I'd say that too. Yeah. I mean, 15 at the very most. Yeah, I don't think that many, that much. Is there any way to measure it for sure? Or? No, not really, no. Should we walk it down? No. I think we want to start. Let's. I want them to see it, and then we'll. And then we yeah, try walking down. Yeah, that's a good idea. Watch yeah. them while they have visual on. Exactly. See if it goes away. Where they sure. know where to look. Lower. Right. Exactly. Right. But they have to actually see it, bro. Before, like, before we can walk it. Yeah. Like maybe ten feet off the ground. Oh no, more than that. Maybe it should be. Other Anybody way. have well, the elevation? Well, 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 I know, right? <laughs> I know. I'm like, there has to be a better way. To do this. And then say that right. Okay, let's go. They say they're right. Okay, let's go. They say they're right. Okay, let's go. They say they're right. Okay, let's go. Okay, let's go. All right. Up, 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 up. Well, now we have holy smokes confirmation that not only did Josh and the IIG West see the balloons on Capri Road before liftoff, which would be impossible to see on a globe, just wait because we also have them on camera admitting to seeing trees and houses which they shouldn't have seen on that side under the curve of the globe. Plus we knew we had to go out there with an altimeter and retest because Josh had trusted the science team and wasn't recording so we wanted to recreate that footage and recreate the IIG West positions footage from our own cameras and take a real altimeter out there and figure out the altitudes of things. As all of this was happening, I was quietly setting up my little P900 camera a foot above the seawater, and I had no idea I was about to be on Jaronism Live with Rob Skiba. I was so freaking excited because I love Jaron's videos, and they worked with me to help me actually capture a truck driving along a highway right over the sea that should not have been visible over the curve. This is an excerpt of exactly what happened. Before we start, I need to tell you what we are about to look at. Not only in this footage are you going to see them admitting to a false horizon and plenty of mirror images and mirages and things disappearing in and out of that, we're going to see them admitting potentially to the balloons being right there on Capri Road before lift off, all at four to five feet high. To explain why it's impossible to see all of this stuff from four to five feet high, the Earth Curve Calculator states that at 9.6 to 9 .6 miles and 5 feet high, your eye line should be 31 feet. So Spencer's eye line would be right here and never be able to see anything down here. And if they can still see anything over here at all from their 4 to 5 feet height, Earth is flat. This is what it would look like on a globe. Spencer would be here. The globe would be here, the balloons would be here, and Spencer's eye line would be right. It would go right past it, and all of this would be down below. 
Also listen carefully for the IIG meeting. They can see cars and trucks along that road in that area and trees and houses, which I also captured on the redo experiment right along Capri Road, which is impossible on a globe because houses about 15 feet high would have put them well underneath my eye line and I captured the entire house plus the berm underneath, so just stay tuned. Please pause this video if the subtitles go too fast for you so you can read them or at any time during this documentary. I think it got mixed with so much fresh water or something that they said the fish started dying there or something. 0.6 miles, I have 9.8, they have 9.6. And they're trying to locate right now a large balloon. I just asked Jim if they lifted a curve above what they're oh, yeah. supposed to be, and he said yes, and they still couldn't find it. So mm. right now they're being pretty cool. They're not sure if it's the mirage well, I, of I the double mirror yeah. that's yeah. hiding it, or they just can't find it at all. Mm. So. Second one? For what sure, we for sure see what's behind them. What, what's, behind uh, them? what's behind them on the other side? To make sure we're seeing yeah. in the right direction and everything. My camera's down really, really low. Okay. That's really low. Oh, okay, that's yours. And I was able to catch a white building over here right above the mirror line. It looks like a shoreline, but I didn't know the altitude of that building, so, mm -hmm. you know, I'm going to wait for the boat. I could look for you. You think it's a white building, you said? Yeah, yeah. Because I've got um, Google Earth up here. Okay. Or how would I send it to you? Maybe you can just show us. Well, is that the 798 Capri? 798 Capri is the address. Yeah. I'd be real interested to see the altitude of that building. Do you know the direction okay. you're looking? Okay, the direction is roughly 220 degrees. We're here at the North Shore. Gotcha. And then looking southwest, that's where the target is. White building. I don't mm -hmm. know if you guys can see that. So on the oops, what that happened? drop from my camera level is supposed to be 45. 45 feet, feet drop expected. Yeah. And there's a white building. It looks like oh, it might be a church you're looking at. Is that a a truck going across there? Mm -hmm. So there's a truck going on the road over there. Okay. Do you see that? Can you tell that what the altitude of that road is right over there? Yeah. Uh, if you see the truck, you know what's crazy is that the uh, from what I can tell, you know you know you're 230 feet below sea level, right? Oh, yeah? Yeah, we are. So yeah, can... but the truck is 210 feet below sea level. <laughs> so how high is the road off of the water? Um, the road is 20 about feet. 20 feet, maybe. Yeah. yeah. Okay. The road. Because according to my camera right here, which can see that, the road should be 45 feet under the curve. What road are you talking about? Whatever road those trucks that, well, I can't oh, say the now, main, like the main, I guess it's the main road. Yeah, the road right behind Capri, I guess. Let me get the uh, distance to the road there. <laughs> Is there more than one road right there? No, there's just one, it looks like. Main, like a main highway or something? Well, I mean, the, the road, I'm, I'm looking at it to the right. It's, the road is banking up. Okay, the road does go up to the right. But if, if you're talking about straight in line with where those people are with the balloons, that's only 20 feet. Well, we can't see that. We can't see that. The, the, the road is obscured by trees and houses. The, the, the road is obscured by trees and houses. The, the, the road is obscured by trees and houses. The, the road is obscured by trees and houses. We're getting huge mirroring effect. Yeah. Oh, I'm huge. sure. Oh, I'm sure you are. We get a lot of mirroring effect. The, we're getting a, a false horizon. We get a lot of mirroring effect. The, we're getting a, a false horizon. Listen carefully, the IIG is about to admit they can see the trucks on Capri Road or the highway right behind Capri where Jaron just measured altitude at only 20 feet above sea level. The expected curve there for IIG is 35 feet and for me is 45, so it's impossible for them to see trucks there. You see the white trailer and the truck? That's Spencer sitting at a telescope four feet up, looking at a road that's supposed to be under 38 feet of earth curve. You see the white trailer and the truck is driving right now? Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's actually where they are, all the over there. Oh, really? The they're where that truck is? You got the car. You can look at it. I'm <laughs> um, where they are, uh, the road is 200 feet, and the water ends at 230. So that's 30 feet. So you c shouldn't be able to see anything on that road behind them. And actually, that's a further distance. Let me, let me go. In. Okay. Oh, oh, I see it. I see it. Okay, we see it now. We see it. 
Wait a minute, do you realize what just happened? We just saw Spencer Marks and heard his voice saying, Okay, okay, we see it now. The balloons on Capri Road from a height of about four to five feet above sea level, which I just told you is impossible on a globe. Okay, let's hear it again. And right after this, they lift the balloons 20 feet off Capri Road. Okay, oh, oh, I see it, I see it. Okay, we see it now. We see it. Okay, okay let's go. Okay, let's go. We see it. Interestingly enough, on our redo experiment, our altimeter clearly measured Capri Road at 13 feet up. So according to this photo and the Earth Curve calculator and our alt altimeter, Spencer should only see three feet of these balloons, but let's just check out how much of this structure he claims to see. That was really exciting for me. 20 feet. Okay, we can see the two balloons. We can see the target flying now, but the, there's a little bit of a mirror effect, but the target's now bobbing right about at the, the brake line. Right, one of the balloons is running together. Yeah, bring it down, bring it down, bring it down. Okay, we're See, everything is a mirror image there. If I okay, zoom out a little now bit, you can balloons. Okay. And all right, right. See, everything's reflecting at that midpoint, mm -hmm. and that's where the balloon is emerging. And here we have a truck okay, moving, okay, and, and it disappeared below the reflection point. And then, so you shouldn't be able to see any trucks from there. How, all right, cool. They're walking it towards the water. How far up from the shoreline were you? Uh, we were, uh, they were on a berm similar to this berm. Uh, similar to this berm. How far back? Uh, okay. 20 yards, 20 yards, 20, 30 yards back from the shore. They're on the shore now. They were on a similar area that we have here, about 20 or 30 yards back. Are you, hey, Newman, are you bringing the balloons up? How high are you up right now, Nathan? Oh, are you okay? That's just them holding it up for us to try. Are you right now? I'm 46 feet, okay. 46 feet. 45, 46 feet. They claimed the balloons went 45 feet high, but their tape measure was clearly going on the diagonal, as you can see that the IIG man points out next in the next clip. So we hold some contention that it was actually a full 45 feet in the air. One balloon popped. Well, when we were seeing it just now, it was 46 feet up <laughs> on the ground. Mm -hmm. um, the target or the balloon? The, the, balloon the, popped, the so. target or the balloon? Uh, the... The, get bar. Something hanging down. the bar that's Actually, hanging under balloon? Yeah, let me give you a better image. Okay. Okay, so here's an image of what the target looks like. Okay. And then oh, okay. here's what it looks like aloft. Oh, cool. So the height that we're measuring is to this line right here, this um, PVC pipe. Okay. okay. Yeah, that's what's going on. And so, yeah, you can see there's a tape holding onto it. So well, they got it upright and it was 46 feet off the ground. Gotcha. When we were seeing it. Oh, okay. So you had a like a tape measure? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a Connected real. It? Oh, yeah, okay, it's a tape gotcha. real. Moving on from the false horizons and mirror lines and diagonal tapes, here's my truck footage. Now I filmed this truck heading straight for Capri Road just to its left from my point of view and it certainly never looks like it's about to fall off the earth or go down into a wall of water or anything like that. In fact, right about here, you can see it just continuing on in a nice straight line. Okay, so I think the truck was somewhere around Salton Sea Beach. Um, I looked at it both from the observation side and this side. You can see the mountains are kind of ending over here. And it drove up way up here is Capri. And then you can see the truck is kind of heading towards some buildings. There's some buildings here. These are really the only ones here. So um, just to get the altitude of this highway, my Google Earth is being kind of a bastard right now. It's not working at all. But you can see right down here in the corner, the altitude is changing. It's like 171, 169, 177. I see 177 in there. One, so it's basically altitude about 171-ish, 175. So let's just uh, get the calculator here. They're saying that the C is at negative 230. Hope I do this right. I'm just going to minus out the 175 to find the difference.
So that should be about 55 feet above sea level. This truck route should be about 55, 50, 55 feet above sea level right here is what Google Earth is saying. And that is about the height I got of the cliff below the truck. Um, I analyzed it using the average semi-truck height of 13.6 feet high and then just duplicating little squares around it down the cliff and I got about 41 feet worth of cliff not 50 55 there's about 10 foot difference but I might be making a little bit of a mistake at this far plus I don't know exactly exactly where the truck was and I don't know if what's below the mirror line would be considered cliff or not or if it is just merely a reflection in the water all in all it's matching extremely closely there may be a 10 foot difference let's check the earth curve calculator and see what it says all right so I used my distance measure app to get my exact location on the beach over there at the North Shore Recreational Center side went all the way over past Capri and went over to Salton Sea Beach and landed on the freeway back there ended up with a distance of 17,440 meters converted into miles that's 10.8 miles and remember my camera was one foot above the sea let's plug it in one foot high 10.8 miles away holy smokes the beach there should have been 61 feet below the earth curve so everything there the truck and the cliff should have been completely hidden by the earth curve even allowing for the extra 10 feet plus or minus there's just no way i should have seen this truck plus all of that cliff from that far away one foot above sea level to me this was a super clear flat earth win and remember, as you're going to the left, you're getting even farther away from the camera, so it should be even farther over the globe. And as you're, as the truck's driving to the right, it's getting closer to Capri, which is only a 20 or 30 foot elevation on that highway, so definitely should be over the curve. Okay, moving on, but just to let you know, on the day of the redo, I did film this whole entire area, trucks running around all over, and they never dipped under the water or went into a wall of water or anything like that, so that footage is coming up. Right after this, this really cool camera guy got me an interview with National Geographic and the camera people loved it actually. They were running around having a great time. This guy was super nice and uh, unlike the other media who was busy, remember calling us unhealthy to society in a very biased presentation which I want to remind everyone science is not supposed to be biased but they were biased. They were so biased. They called their experiment a round earth demo. It wasn't even an experiment. They had no room in their mind for it to be wrong. Anyways, moving on. We moved on to my flag. So they took the flag that I had painted with Spencer out into the Salton Sea and ran it out there about three miles. The idea of this experiment was to place the flag upright, run it away from us, and then if the water covered up the flag at the appropriate times and the appropriate ways, which matched the earth curve calculator, we would be proving a globe, and if not, and nothing got covered up, it was flat. I placed my camera about, you know, sea level, maybe about half a foot off the sea level, and sadly enough, somehow, somebody or something or something had messed with my camera settings, so I was literally unable to capture this. Um, my P900 just wouldn't focus. It took me getting home to realize that the settings had been changed. But I was able to look through the viewfinder and realize that this experiment was just invalid. And it was my experiment originally, but I did want it taken off water. Now that it was back on water, I was able to clearly see with my own eyes that this could possibly be a perspective vanish. I never saw the flag vanish myself, to be honest with you, because the P900 was messed up. But as it ran out there to the ocean, I was able to take a look at what was in my viewfinder. And what was in my viewfinder was these giant waves. The waves looked really, really big in my viewfinder. And because of my background in art, I was able to figure out what was going on. Objects that were closer to me appeared larger than objects that were farther away from me, meaning that the flag was looking smaller and smaller, but the waves in front of the flag between me and the flag were looking larger and larger just due to perspective. Any of the waves that were in the foreground and closer to me than the flag was could have looked larger than the flag just due to perspective. 
And if the flag was being covered up, this could have been a possible explanation for that. Once I realized I didn't know where the waves I was looking at were in relationship to me and the boat, I had no idea if the wave was just going to cover up the boat because it was vanishing on perspective and the wave was appearing very large in comparison to it, or if it was due to earth curve. So I quickly started running around telling everyone that I was calling invalid on this experiment. Sadly enough, no one was listening to me from the science side. They just wanted this experiment to work for them. And I just had to start calling them bad scientists because if you have learned that your experiment could be flawed, and I'm not saying it was, but if it has the possibility to even be a flaw in it, you are supposed to scrap that and go to one that gives you proof your experiment has no proof if it could be flawed. It's interesting that Nathan saw the footage of the IIG West of the flag disappearing and he said that not very much water was covering the bottom of the flag, not as much as they claimed. So we'll have to see what that shows once they release their footage. Even though my camera had been messed with, I was super glad I got to do this test because I finally was able to understand Wolfie's videos. Sorry, Wolfie, but I'm going to have to invalidate your globe videos right now. So Wolfie makes globe videos, and he mirrored this one by this guy, Mick, MC1, Mick the MC1, who stood about 30 feet up and filmed his ship about 30, uh, about 18 miles away, 30 to 35 kilometers, and it appears as if this ship is way down underneath the ocean, thereby proving the curve. It doesn't really make sense to me that the ship is standing straight upright though and not leaning away from us as it should on a curve. But it was after I did the salt and sea test that I was able to understand what was happening here. It's very possible that we are looking at the waves in the foreground which appear to be covering up the ship in the background. Not only that, you've got a ship running around right in front of it which is depressing the ocean. We all know that any time you push something heavy down into water, the water level rises right around it. So who's to say that you're not looking at the water which has raised right around this big heavy ship here and due to perspective is just extremely much larger than the ship in the background. So no, I do not think you proved a globe with these videos, Wolfie or the other guy. Back to the salt and sea, here were the results of the IIG tests, completely invalid. I don't feel there was any reason to make fun of us on TV when they had such sloppy work and didn't even get altitudes of items across the sea. We knew it was time for a retest and by this point we were confused and wondered, are they lying to us? Because they did see those balloons. Woohoo! Time to show you what happened in our retest. Yes, we did go recreate that footage from the Josh Fell position and the beach, and we did a laser experiment, and we erected a giant pole, and we have gone back to that sea over and over and over again. We were out there nine days. The IIG was out there two days and three days. One of those days, only some of their members came, like three of them came, and they just sat back munching popcorn. Well, the day is going to come when we get to sit back because they're going to be scrambling to prove the globe because we had a flat earth win in every single corner of this and we did our tests then redid our tests to make sure they were accurate. We took altimeters out there and weather equipment and all kinds of stuff. We have obsessively gotten the altitudes of things over and over again, rechecked things. We have, we went around the entire See, Wendell and I spent 15 hours one day getting heat stroke, walking through minefields, and we got the altitudes, photos, and heights, and geolocations of every single tower around the Salton Sea. Here's what happened. We went out there at night this time, and on day one of our dry run, the night before we invited the IIG West down, we captured some awesome footage. First thing we did that night, and then repeated it for the IIG West to their astonishment the next night, was we shown a 10 mile green laser from one side, one beach on the Salton Sea to the other beach on the Salton Sea. So we were literally just a few feet above Salton Sea level. Okay, you can see ours. Ours is like three feet off the sand, we call it like three feet off the sand. 
lasers do not bend. Therefore, it should be impossible to see this laser on the other side of the lake because our laser should be 39 feet underneath the earth curve according to the calculator. So the laser, which shoots only straight, should be shooting only up into outer space and should miss our observers entirely. But not only did we see the laser on either side of the lake, because we tried it on both sides, shooting it back and forth, but we caught it dead on. So we knew we were looking straight down the barrel of this beam and we were looking at its source. So let's check that out. What you're about to see here is you're about to see the laser kind of pointing up into the air and side to side as they're trying to hit us with it because it's real far away and it's hard to get us dead on. But then eventually right here, you start seeing it dead on. The light is just hitting us square in the face. Now if you can see all the edges of the circle like that, it means the beam is straight behind it and you're looking straight down the barrel of it at the source. This already proved Earth is flat, but don't believe me. Go out and do your own experiments. And there's just more to come. What I want you to notice about this is that you can actually see the lights right there along with the source with your own eyes. Now the interesting thing about this is if you can see those lights at all, Earth is flat because there is really no city behind these lights. These are the lights from the parking lot of the original IIG West position. And those lights, you can do this if you live out at the Salton Sea with no equipment or if you go out there. Just go lay down, put a blanket down, go lay down at the sea level because the earth curve calculator states that if you're at zero eye line, then even at their crappier distance of 9.6 miles, all of those lights there should be 61 feet below the earth curve. And actually, it being the real distance of 9.8 miles is 64 feet under the curve. The average height of a light pole is 25 feet. So I'm going to show you right now why it would be impossible to see these lights. And I want you to just go do this for yourself. Just go out there and just go do it yourself. You don't need any equipment to see that you're seeing over the supposed curve. So if you go behind the IIG observation site, there's really no city behind it back here. These are the only lights on that area which are lining, clearly lining the parking lot where the observation side was. Um, but even if you want to go back here and look at think say that, oh, well, those lights might have been on the road. These are only at an elevation of about 205. So 233 is what we got with the altimeter for the salt and sea, minus 205. So that leaves us with 28 elevation here. And this is the highest area plus 25 feet average light pole is only 53 feet high so the light poles here would still be under the 64 foot curve if you go into here into this area we've got an elevation of about 218 so 233 minus 218 is 15 feet above sea level plus the average height of a light pole so these ones would only be 40 feet above the surface so we're talking 53 feet here 40 feet here and it's even worse here because these are only like <laughs> okay if we put the berm up we um, got that on the altimeter of 15 feet above the sea level then we add the height of a light pole that's 40 feet so we're ranging 40 feet high 40 feet high and this actually didn't have lights but you know maybe it did so these are like 50 yeah all of these are well underneath the 64 foot earth curve drop. Now the next day Wendell and I actually sat down and sketched out how the laser beam should have looked if earth was a globe so you can see the difference. Since I can't find my tennis ball I'm going to use this oblate spheroid apple type earth to show you what it would look like and this is going to represent the laser beam. So we would be standing right here on the Salton Sea and the other crew would be standing over here on the Salton Sea. Now <clears throat> our laser beam, if we shoot it from this side, should be going straight over their heads. But it wasn't, it was hitting them in the face. 
Now, if you were on a globe, you would never see it pointing straight at you, like straight down the barrel, which is, this is the barrel of the beam, to the other people on the other side, which would indicate flat. You would only ever see it like this, pointing up in the air. And it did point up in the air a lot, but then when we would lower it correctly, you see it hitting you suddenly straight on. So you should see it wiggling around like this, but never straight on. And what it would look like on a globe, here would be your globe and your little person shooting the laser off from over here would never be able to get it at you. They'd never be able to get it at you like this, right? They, it would only be shooting off into space. And because light cones aren't, they're not straight, light cone spreads. So light cone starts here, and the shape of a light is like this. So it does spread. So what you would see, if the person was on the other side of this ball, standing right here, shining it straight, would be, it'd be going out into outer space, and it would look like this. Okay, you'd never see it look like this, which means you're looking straight down the barrel of it. So this thing here should have a round shape. You would be looking at something more like this. And this would be diffuse light. You would never see that real big, um, the bright light, which indicates you're looking right at the very source of the light. It would all be the same diffuse light, and you would have a nice curve here for the Earth curve, because this is the Earth. So you'd want to see something a shape more like this. But that's not what we were seeing. We were seeing this. So you could see the light source, and then you could see the beam. And we were seeing this, which indicates Earth is flat. The next evening, we invited the IIG West out to show them the laser experiment, and three of their members did show up, Ross, Spencer, and Jim Newman. What did they say about it? It was just all this on us, right there, a little lower, and to your right, just a little bit right there, straining our face, I could see that, just like hitting us on this. You see it on the street, right there? There, there it is. Yes! Yeah. Yeah, he held it. See, look. <laughs> look at the face, face time. Closer. There it is. Yeah, right there is great. Wow. 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 Here, look at that. Look at that, man. Yeah. We're like about two feet off the ground right now. Yes. Two feet off? We're about a foot and a half. Yes. Look at that. Look at that, man. Look at that. Nine miles. That is Nine sweet. Nine miles, baby. No curve. Oh, I don't think it's really good. No, I got that. It's it's a, that's why we can't paint a building from one side to the other because right. the light's not staying that close to the group. Right. But yeah, I mean, it, it is creating a cone that captures us, and that's pretty cool. Now, what I want to do is I'm going to move the camera down the shoreline to see if it if it still shows up like that or if it shows up like a line all right so it's really important for you not to move the laser okay so here it is shining on my leg at about a hundred feet oh yeah that's good bring it up well that's kind of like what we've been saying when we did our test that you know the we know we can see a laser light, but it's it's if it's it, it's so <laughs> diffuse, we can it's just lighting up the atmosphere. It's going to be a not a, a great test. So if they're at if we're at like three feet, they're, they're at three feet. How much curvature should there have been? Uh, so from this distance, since I'm guessing it's pretty close to the distance we we're at before, about 9.6 miles, we shouldn't be able to see anything unless it's 35 feet off the water. Yeah, or higher. Right. Well, so what does that mean to you? So well, far? If, uh, again, I, see, I see what you're saying. Uh, I, I think I've just answered that already. Well, for me, the problem still exists that we could walk sideways over 100 feet. So you're not looking at a point source. You're looking at a 
big, bright, huge. But no, I mean, this is super cool. I mean, it is I super mean, cool. I mean, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not diminishing how cool this it is. I'm just saying, if not, if you could set up a target and see a single point, that would be awesome. But we're not seeing a single point. We're seeing a big, huge, dispersed right. light, like a huge, you know, massive glowing spotlight. Total uh, cone should be about 147 feet wide. Oh wow. So we should... But we're in the core of it, but the core itself is about 30 feet wide. If we showed you footage like that just has the circle without the beam behind it, would you agree that it was coming straight at us? I mean, that's possible. Okay. <laughs> awesome. It's possible. Thanks for being open-minded. Yeah. <laughs> So I, I feel like that might be relevant to what we saw tonight. Um, but still, I, I admit, what we saw was really cool and very compelling. It was so cool that Jaren from Jarenism Live and 500 people stayed up with us literally all night long as we did this redo experiment and they broadcast it live while we were there with the IIG West. Now, unfortunately, the video got labeled a failure, even though I did not feel the test that night was a failure due to the awesome success of the laser beam and also what happened the next day. But two of our experiments that night did not work. We filled balloons and put them on a string, but the glow sticks just were not bright enough to oh, be seen from awesome. the other shore, and the weather conditions yeah. got real bad. So we had this giant fog rolling in, and we had erected a giant stick with measuring markers and put it up on the beach. It couldn't be seen, it was falling over and stuff, but what happened the next day made up for everything. Get this large stick that's only going to have one erection, huh? Now before we head over to the other side of the sea to show you what happened when we tried to look at the big stick and the balloons on the string that we had put up, I just want to explain to you what happened with the red blinky towers. So we had seen some red blinking towers lining the Salton Sea and Spencer admitted that he could see one. I could actually see it laying on the Salton Sea ground all the way across the sea and he mapped it out for us by using a compass and determined that we feel he was looking at the Bombay Beach Tower. Now Wendell and I went back there and went and got the altitudes and heights of every single tower around the sea and Spencer should not have been able to see that tower with his eyes or with our cameras. It was the base of it was sitting at sea level because a giant berm of dirt was holding the sea back from it. Maximum we gave it 20 feet altitude because of Google Earth, that's what Google Earth says, and the tower itself was only 70 feet tall. But the Earth Curve calculations at that point... The 5 foot eyeline the Earth Curve calculator placed the drop at Bombay Beach at 144 feet down. The tower itself was 70, the altitude was 20, so the entire operation was only 90 feet high. There's no way in heck Spencer should have ever seen this tower blinking if it was only a 90 foot tall rig entirely with the land and the tower and the curve drop there was 144 feet. So you bet your buckwheats we're gonna go back there and make sure it was Bombay. So this road, Capri, is actually aligned due north as far as actual. There's 20 degrees of magnetic declination. Okay, and then you're going to the red blinking light on that shore. Right. That's it's, it's you approximately get... exactly 90 degrees, 91 degrees from here, which is due east. So now I, I've lost track of the blinky light you're talking. Okay, about. look, the blinking light is. It's right there. Like it's hard to see because of the haze right now. Not. That, that little light there? Mm, that, that's, that's the white the one. There's one there with a few little dim uh, white lights. Do you see the red one right next to it? Oh, no, I see it now. You see it now? Yeah. It was, it was, it okay. Was like, you know, so okay. can you point your... Actually, there's two lights out there. There's two lights? There's a yeah. red blinking one there's and... one right now. You see, there's, they're close together, but they're, there's actually two of them. There's only like, Look at this. Yeah. Flat Earther and Glover yeah. working together. That's crazy. You just heard Spencer from the IIG West Science Group claim to be able to see with his own eyes from six feet height a 90 foot structure over a 140 foot earth curve drop. That's impossible on a globe because earth is flat. Let's head across the lake with the IIG West to see the balloons. Yeah. I see, okay. Up the beach. 
I so see just, your laser. Uh, just like a few feet higher, you can see the screen <laughs> very clearly. Yeah, and we're just able to see yeah. each other's lasers, but, but I can't here, see you the can't balloon. See it at all. I don't think we will because we, I we can can't see, see the street land. We can't see anything over yeah, there. Yeah, there's too much fog. I don't oh. think we're going to be seeing it. Tonight. Oh, you can totally see the street land if you just walk. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Few, so you're a few feet higher. Yeah, if I stand upright, I can see it. Okay. But from the level of my camera, I can't. Yep. Oh, wow. <laughs> Actually, whoa, guys, do this. Like, stand up straight on your tippy toes. Yeah. Then get down. Okay. Up tippy toes. Down. And you'll see that one. Yeah, yeah, up you're here. right. Actually, I do see okay. that. Yep. Okay. Okay. Yep. That's called looking over the curve. <laughs> that, yeah, actually, I think that is a really good demonstration of but what we would call the curve. But how can you just move your two feet? Because Erase. Because Be, that, your that, that's that why, that's why whether it's level, four foot or one foot makes a huge difference. But from this level, those lights yeah. should be 35 if, if you're feet at under. Three feet, it would be even more than to me, this is a mirage because. Well, from here they should be 35 feet, and from here they should be like less than that. Well, I can do yeah, that. No, no, Wait, hold light. on. Way up high up. Now you just go down a little bit, and you oh, suddenly it's. Yeah, I, I, I do see that, but not for all the lights because. No, because they're at different heights. You know, they're, like, they're all different. Okay. Different heights and heights. They look the same from my eyes, but. I mean, we're, we're seeing that laser, and oh, it's, it's not look bending. You can see that it's head. not bending. That light is I not didn't bending. Say it, I didn't never claim it was bending. That's okay. not what I'm saying. I'm okay. why, why does the light, that that street light, why does it disappear when you just go like that? Boom, but why gone. do the other half of them not disappear? Well, and the ones they're, they're over there that are even farther away, little blinky lights, they don't disappear so. at all. There, it's only like a little I section, and I don't know why that little section is disappearing. It's really weird. Well, so what's happening then? Why is it that when I... Uh, squat down a bunch of the lights disappear. I don't know, down. but the thing is, like, if you do it over here for the farther away part, it yeah. doesn't work. I see your laser. It's only working in this one little patch, and even in that little patch, some of the lights are So why would that be? Because you're, you're... I have no freaking idea. It's like this one part. Yeah, because the it looks it's like the fog. It doesn't matter what you're seeing in the back. We're seeing what's in the front. But what I'm All asking that stuff, is why would that light just disappear when you change your eye height? Because the... The ground is warmer than the water. You have to admit, no, fog is well, not an optimal. Fog. The, 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 the like in the lab wouldn't make those sure. would disappear. Because the only time fog is water, and it's I would say when it was shot through actual stuff. like sugar water, it, as it, it needs well, oh, crystals oh, yeah. and it's an object to re not not directly. No, can we put it out? Yes, actually, I got the laser pointing directly yeah, into no, the camera. I'd, I'd say they were hitting us uh, pretty solidly. Yeah. yeah. All yeah. right. Nice. Thanks, Ross. But now they're not really. <laughs> Do the laser uh, this is again. why I'm just going to get away from visuals completely after this, because there's so many freaking illusions and mirages, I just don't trust it. I'm going out with Jaren. We're going out of visuals. There's a false horizon in their videos. And it is weird. Right there. I don't know if there's a, Can you see me? a cloud right there. There's it's like, what the heck is right in front of us? I almost wonder what the weird conditions that happened today. Okay, like, so I sometimes get this weird feeling. It's like the Mandela effect that yeah, Flat Earth doesn't want to be seen by everyone. It's uh, like it ruined right, our yeah, conditions yeah, tonight. Yeah. You see that? Now we're in this yeah, freaking fog. Again, and and it's, it's as if it's hiding it from them or something. I don't know. It's weird. And then they're going to think it's glow, but I'm like, I don't know. Sadly, one of our flat earthers went into the hospital for a few days after the harsh conditions at what we now fondly call the Death Sea, but he finally recovered, thankfully. So we just went out to the retest, and the flat earthers conducted the retest. So, right, we found like the red blinky tower, and we were syncing the two together, and they shouldn't have been seen. It was like 120 feet under the curve, supposedly. And then we did the laser experiment. It's like the laser is like a circle. It's like there's no beam behind it. We know that it was spot on. And they were like six inches above the sand, like a couple of feet above the sand. I was two feet. I was two feet. Uh, two feet. I know Jaron labeled his videos that it wasn't a success in redo, but we don't think so. Some parts of our redo experiment didn't go as planned. But like the majority, like we caught flat earth, like really good. So then the, so what happened at night, though, is though it was me and Nathan were there. And we're on this, like, super black sea. It's really weird alien looking. It was cool. There was, like, a rusted baby crib. I loved that. It was very, very creepy movie-like. And, but it started fogging. And as they were raising the stick, they were erecting the stick. 
Thanks, Wendell. <laughs> and, <laughs> and putting the balloons up. We couldn't see Ross. He's like standing like this, and he's going, look, if I can see, I can see the lights on Capri Road like this, but if I go like this, they disappear. So we're all doing some weird squats on the beach, and I'm like, yeah, I actually do see that. So I was like, this is weird, but if you look at it, like only half the lights on Capri Road are disappearing. These ones aren't. It's only like right here. So I'm like, is this a cloud or something we're looking at? Like we couldn't see, or was there a boat suddenly there? Like, I don't know. They got all happy, and they're just going to film that one little section that was disappearing, and they're going to try to claim global with that. But then what happened, so we go home all like, ah, oh, this is right. It's just hard. Our exper that one experiment didn't work, but everything else did. And then the next day, Wendell's all, Sydney, why would you be upset if you didn't get footage when you left? And I'm like, Wendell, I love you. Okay, I need a shot from Josh Bell's original position to recreate Nathan and Josh Bell's story. I need it from the, the beach. If I can see that, Earth is flat. So we went down, and conditions were perfect that day. Alex helped. Alex was breaking down on Wendell's side. They left me on observation side. I shot across the lake. It was flat, perfect visibility. I shot Capri Road. We got the altimeter working. Everything was perfect when the IIG wasn't there. We filmed. No, this is day. Now we're day. It's on my P900. It's on my P900. Okay, so. And just before I came here, I compared the image of the house I have with Capri from straight close to the one in my P900. You can count the palm trees like it's the same house. So basically, none of that stuff should have been visible from the curve. And it negated that weird squatting thing because it's like I was up on the berm 19 feet high, and I saw it. And then I went down two feet off the ground, and I filmed my camera. And it's like the same. So this wouldn't have worked that day. Like... It was the conditions that night before. It wasn't. There was a fog that rolled in from the south, like when it got really late. It came up. From the I south think that fog was was obstructing their view, so they thought that it was a globe. That was basically what I wanted to explain. Is the next day we really invalidated even their one little globe win at that one night. Even the laser experiment, like the laser experiment, was a total win. Yeah, I mean, it ended up being a really valuable key piece of footage and information. Because we yeah. had those lasers two, two feet up off the ground. And yeah, and now, yeah, IIG, the guys from IIG saw the whole entire thing. What I was talking about is, do you remember when I told you that at 9.6 miles away from Spencer's height, or even from Josh Vale's position, you should have 31 feet hidden and nothing on Capri Road or under should be visible at all, or else Earth is flat. So, yep, I went back and recreated that footage for you, and here it is. Here's Alex, when Alex and Wendell dropped me off at the original IIG West position. This is actually the Josh Vale position, looking straight out over the sea to Capri. And I am filming the altimeter to get the altitude of the camera exactly. <laughs> so this is the video, this is where Josh was, and it's at 19 feet. It'll say like 22 sometimes, then 19. 19 feet off sea level. That's Josh's position under the last thingy here looking over there at Capri Road, the last hut. You just saw me standing here looking out at Capri Road getting my altitude, but what is the altitude of Capri Road, the object I'm looking at? Wendell went over to Capri Lane and got the altitude of Capri Lane with his altimeter. It was 13 feet above salt and sea level which is correlating with Google Earth. We went out there and checked the level of the Salton Sea. It was negative 233, so negative 233 minus negative 220 on Google Earth is 13 feet. Wendell and I went back a couple weeks later and filmed Capri Road up close, the houses, so that you could compare them against what I'm about to show you from my P900 almost 10 miles away, so you can make sure that you know you're looking at Capri Road. The RV was not there the day Wendell and I went back, but it was there on the day of filming. Okay, this is the end of Capri, and there's a big mobile home park and a bunch of houses going this direction. Okay, we're on Capri Lane. We're about to head past the Brown House. Okay, here's the Brown House that you could see from the footage. Coming up is the... Like a blue house with a gray roof bunch of trees in front, just like a ton of trees. The dark blue house with a white, actually two houses right next to each other. The RV home, the RV's not there today, but it was that day with the 
three palm trees. And over here is the white house with the blue, um, blue roof. And down here is the end of the road where the truck was parked. What about that brown house too? The brown house, you can't really see in the footage though. It's too blurry, but yeah. There was a brown house right there and there's a white house with a blue top. And the truck's going right behind it. Okay, I'm at North Shore now looking over to Capri Road. And you can see the little trucks whenever they show up running along that highway. There's one. Going behind a house. Going behind trees and houses. There's the highway back there. Okay, there's the highway behind Capri. You can see these houses real clear. I guess what shocked me most about this footage on the day being so clear was you could actually see the beach sand and you could see the dark berm right above. So I was literally looking at the beach sand, the berm, the road, and the houses and trees and the cars behind it, just like Jim said. Of course, Jim and the IIG were only five feet above salting sea level, so I knew I had to head down to the sea to check out the Capri Lane from that level, which I did, and caught the exact same things there too. This is also where I found out the white building I kept telling Jaren I was filming was the building right next to Tower One, right down the street from Lorenzo's gas station. I analyzed the elevation of this white building using an estimate of it from the day we went back and got all of the altitudes of the towers. It appears to be about 15 feet high if you look at Wendell against it. And I used that to analyze it against the photos I had taken of it from about 9.8 miles away, a little bit farther actually, because remember it's set back from the road. And to my shock and surprise on every single photo I had of it, the altitude matched almost exactly to about 71 to 65-ish feet and the elevation there that we got was 69 feet, 70 feet high. What that means is, dun 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 dun, Earth is flat because it's showing all of the landmass underneath the building that should be there according to the elevation from Google Earth and our altimeters, no matter which position I'm filming in. Not only that, but if you check it out, from my position, only one foot above the sea, or two feet above the sea, the beach there should have been 45 to 64 feet underneath the earth curve. So I shouldn't be able to see any land at all underneath that tower. But I see almost all of the land, or all of the land. So this is all impossible stuff on a globe here. I want to show you why what you just saw looking from the Josh Fell position is impossible on a globe. So I've made this two scale model with these 15 foot balloons here on Capri Road. Capri Road was 13 feet, this berm was 15 feet. So looking out here, this is your new zero eye level. According to the Dist Measure app of 9.8 miles away, a zero eye level results in a 64 foot 
earth curve drop. So this should have been 64 feet under the earth curve, meaning that this isn't even the globe eye line. That globe eye line is like right up here. We should be seeing nothing down here from Josh Phil's position. But I'm going to do it from down here too next. Just so you know that I'm not just talking crap, that two items at the same altitude create a new zero eye line level. Let's hear what Spencer Marks from the IIG West has to say about it as he agrees that yes, this is true. Okay, Thank wait, you. so you're Amen. saying that you can create your own level anywhere sure. you're at? Yeah, you can zero. that's what this is yeah. for. So yeah. if I have a level at the C, that's the new level? Yes. Forget, forget. Even though it's even though it's minus. Yes, yes correct. C level. Yes. Correct. Yeah, yeah. We can create a new zero level yes. at this water. Unless you're messing Absolutely. with the barometric pressure and Can we like do that, the same thing on the berm? It. Can we create sure. a new yeah. level on the berm Absolutely. from that berm to something on the other side that's the same altitude? Absolutely. Yes. Okay. Like for instance, we would want to know from the water to the street, right? Well, I the wanted to know to from Spencer's mouth because he's the scientist um, guy. So we if just need to we can create down. our own level between berm to berm, and so, he said well, yes. The question here is, is this Just before I headed down to the water and decided to go even lower than the IIG West position, I noticed something crazy. I had seen Wendell's truck show up. There it was at the end of Capri Lane, because it wasn't there the first time around, but there it was the second time around I filmed. Okay, so I've got my P900 right there on the picnic table. Try to recreate the IIG West position, which is about my tripod. Oh, let's just go down a little bit lower. And I'm gonna shoot out there to Capri from this height now. And then get down even farther and try to get the truck footage again. The water was like glass. No mirages, no mirroring, no false horizon, and no waves. I've got my compass lined up here to show I'm pretty much full. I'm shooting directly at Capri. Uh, even though I don't have the balloons somewhere right over there on that area. I got the north lined up to the north side and this is Capri here. So if you draw a straight line, my camera I'm trying to shoot straight out on that line to get directly to Capri. Okay, on the conditions right now the lake is glass. It's like not even a wave on it. pull out a little bit it's just too hard to get in close when I'm not really on a tripod okay so I'm just shooting off the picnic table now believe that's Capri right there um, see here I'm only like three feet off the water here and I'm seeing same scene oops uh, there we go same exact scene. I just went down to the beach level and there. So this looks like the highway going behind the trees and houses. Here's one of those little blinking things. So, yep, just two feet above the Salton Sea level and the IIG West position. 
you could see the same scene, no squats changed anything, and you could see the beach and the berm and the houses and the trees and the cars, which was impossible on a globe. But just to make extra, extra sure, I had the Capri Lane. Okay, so we're trying to help Sydney and Carolyn locate us on the Capri with a, uh, with a flare gun. We're gonna do a countdown. Three, two, one, fire! And there it is. There she blows. She's up. Uh, see ya. Yeah. All right. I visually had the correct location and Caroline spotted it. And then I spotted the second laser. And yep, I had it. Then I brought the footage home and I analyzed it. I even took the photograph that I had straight up on Capri Lane. And I made it a little transparent and overlaid it onto the top of the footage I had obtained from almost 10 miles away and it matched perfectly like click so yep yeah, that was definitely Capri I was looking at and then even to make extra extra sure we decided to take a mirror out and we had the mirror flashing from Capri Lane and filmed it from the beach and we also filmed the mirror from the beach over to the other side from Capri Lane here's that footage Yeah, I see it. I see it flashing. Yeah, Let me see if I can zoom in on it. Hey, I see it on the camera. I can see it. Keep flashing. I can see it on the camera. I'm not zoomed in that much because I need to. I need to keep locating you guys. So keep flashing. Yeah, it's hard to tell. Oh, I saw it. Keep flashing. That's what you're right on it. There you go. I got you. Keep flashing. Yep, you're hitting us. Yeah. I don't see it anymore. Keep flashing. Yes, yes. Cool. All right. Very nice. Success.
So, oh yeah, not sorry National Geographic, IIG West, and anyone else who thinks Earth is a globe because Earth is definitely flat, but just to do overkill, we decided to take a 30 mile blue laser out there and we couldn't quite film it hitting a sheet because the light was still too dim once it hit the other side for it to be seen by camera, but you can see the blue reflecting off of my bracelets, which was super cool, which does prove that the light was hitting the other side of the sea, which is impossible on a globe. Wow, that is a kick-ass setup you guys have. Right? Yeah. Look how straight that freaking oh laser beam is. I just want to take a picture of it like this. And just to be super bastards, we took a flashlight out there and we could see the flashlight from the other side just inches above the water. Nathan, I could see it on my arm. Oh yeah, we can see it. Like it was bright as hell, right? And then you could actually see it sitting in the beat. When you turn it on, I can see it on my arm. Wait, somebody should be filming this. I'm six, I'm six inches above the water. It was my phone recording on Poncho. Yeah, but someone over here should be filming. Wendell? I'm trying to film right now. Yeah. You should filming. be filming this. Oh, someone should, yeah. Okay. Okay, hold on. I'm trying to explain everyone that I can see it on my arm when they flash it over here. Okay, Josh, we'll try it, it again. my arm. You ready? You ready? Okay, we're going down. Okay. Oh, they're going down right now? Josh, can you sign on so I can see how far it is off the water? No way! You can still see it. It's like six, four inches. It's four inches. Like, yeah, I'm about four inches off the water. You can still see it? No, it's there. It's just a flashlight. That's crazy. I'm throwing it in the water. <laughs> okay, is it on? It's on. Okay, turn it off. Are you recording? Yeah, I'm recording. Is it off? Yep, it's off. Oh, no, wait. No. It's off. Okay, it's off. So look, it's right here. Okay, turn it on again. Hold on, don't, don't move behind. I want to see if there's, if there's different levels of brightness. Yeah, there is. Right there, that's a bright. Okay, that's good. Oh, it's on. It's on? Okay, oh, yeah. turn it back okay. off. Can I turn it off? Yeah. Yep. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We see you guys. We got you guys. Not even a laser. Not even a laser. Okay, let's see how low we can get this thing off the... Off the... Turn the flashlight. Hold on. Oh, got it. Got it. Turn it off. Got it. Nice. Okay, now, now, see how low you can get it. Turn it back on. Okay, now don't turn it off. Oh, Keep it is. on, and then see how low you can, oh, as you, as okay. you tell, tell me how low you, you get it. Okay, I'm going down. Tell me when you can catch it anymore. Okay. We can still see it. We can still see it. Still see it. We can still see it. Somebody should be filming this. I'm filming. We're, yeah, we're, we're filming. That is insane. We can still see it. We can it. still see yeah, it. Someone over here should be filming. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Sydney. Oh, no. yeah. be filming this. Sydney, film. Turn it off. Okay, there. We're good. There we we go. got it. We got it. Turn it back on. Boom. Ready? Yeah, ready. Camera's okay, going down. Okay. We can still see it. 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 No way. Yeah, yep. we can still see it. We can still see it. We can still see it. It's four inches. Yeah, I'm about four inches off the water. Get out of here. Still see it. Put it, put it in the water. Put it on the water. <laughs> hey, I'm throwing it in the water. Oh, my God. Oh, oh we now we get lost it. We lost it. We don't see it anymore. I turned it off. Oh. <laughs> hey, Josh. Yeah. I can see your blue laser light shining on my arm. When I lifted my arm up, it was shining on my arm. Sydney, that's freaking crazy. This is yeah. this is freaking rocks. It was while I was making this documentary that I suddenly realized the Earth curve calculator is bunk and it's a bunch of crap and globe Earth math doesn't even make sense. So, sorry, but I have to destroy the Earth Curve Calculator right now. Here is why the Earth Curve Calculator is a punked out pile of BS. It gives multiple answers for the same scenario. Now, it doesn't matter what scenario we choose here because Earth will still be flat in every single scenario I show you. 
but the answer changes depending on who you choose as your observer and what you choose as your point of view of what you're looking at on the other side. I'll get straight to the examples. So if you choose the IIG as your primary and first observer and say this is zero right here, then Josh Vale would actually be 19 feet up. So you would plug 19 feet into the Earth Curve Calculator and say, well, you know, something that you're seeing here at zero should only be 13 feet under the curve. In that scenario, Josh should be able to see everything from up here, but nothing from down here because this is thir Capri Road was 13 feet, so Josh would have been able to see the balloons if you choose IIG as the first observer and call this zero. But what if you're calling this zero and Josh is the first observer and Josh says, no, actually I'm the observer. My ground feet is zero right here. And that makes me four feet up. And so I should be seeing anything right here should be 36 feet under the earth curve calculator. And you are actually negative. But guess what? The Earth Curve Calculator doesn't allow for negative calculations. Josh would be the first one, and this would be zero, or this would be zero, and this could be considered negative. So you're getting a different answer whether you re regard this to be positive or this to be negative. This would be positive, making this negative, or is this positive, making this even more positive? And I only figured this out because salt and C is negative. And I found even more answers the Earth Curve Calculator is giving. <laughs> Which just makes it super obvious the thing is broken and BS. So do you want to consider that this is the zero eye line because they're at the same exact altitude, which is perfectly appropriate. So you would be at a zero eye line right here, which would make this 64 feet under the curve. So now we've got 64 feet here. And, or are you actually six feet above this thing? So here's your new target, right? And that's 13 feet, 15 feet. So 13, 14, 15, two feet, plus a four foot high camera, two plus four is six. So are you actually six feet above this? And that answer would be that then this should be 30 point eight feet under the earth curve. Right there alone, you've got boom, one answer, boom, two answers for the same scenario, depending on what you chose over here to be your target. None of this matters for flat earth, however, because at two feet above sand level, I was able to see all of this stuff. And right here at two feet above sand level, 9.8 miles away, it's super clear that this should have been 43 feet under the curve, 43 feet right here. The average tree starts at about, ends at 40 feet. So I shouldn't have seen any of those trees. I shouldn't have seen this. I shouldn't have seen the beach. The average house is gonna reach up to about here. So there's absolutely no way if my eye line was supposed to be here on the globe that I should have seen any of this from the beach minimum, but I did. And this, clearly, at a zero eye line, should have been 64 feet under the curve. But do you see how this earth curve calculator is giving multiple answers? It's all over the place. The thing is a pile of crap. Globe math doesn't make sense. Earth is flat. Their math is bunk. And then, as I was analyzing this, I realized something huge. We had all miscalculated, the science group miscalculated, the flat earthers miscalculated. If you look at this drawing, yes, you can develop a zero eye line from mountain to mountain, but what we had forgotten is the radius, the larger radius up at that mountain's height. So we all know the larger the ball you're standing on, the more flat it looks and the more of it you should be able to see, kind of like an ant walking along a large orange, right? 
but the reverse is also true. So the smaller a ball you're standing on, the less land you should see. And you should start looking like the little prince where you just, no matter which direction you look out, you're just looking into outer space and you're seeing a huge curvature. In fact, you can just see it right underneath your own feet. So the curve is much, much greater on a small ball than on a big ball where the curve is much, much less and things look flatter. So let's take a look at this mountain to mountain chart. This is perfectly legitimate to go altitude to altitude and create a zero eye line. However, what we forgot to do was calculate for the larger radius of the larger globe that this would then be on. So if you have a mountain, you now have to recalculate for a much larger circle and a much lower curvature as you head down to sea level which is what the earth curve calculator is based on to observe two things at sea level at the same altitude to observe your curve would get greater than it was up in the mountains because now you're calculating for a smaller circle or smaller globe but the really interesting thing about this is we weren't at sea level. We were below sea level. We were 233 feet below sea level. So actually the curvature there should have been extreme and much greater than what we were calculating on with the earth curve calculator, which is calculating for a bigger radius, a bigger circumference and a bigger globe than where we were actually standing because the curvature down at the Salton Sea should have been much greater as we were on a smaller circumference in that area. So that means if we take the worst position for flat earth or the worst calculation, which was that this camera is 19 feet up and looking over here, this should have only been 13 feet under. Actually, that's wrong. If you recalculate for the tinier circumference and the greater curve, this should have been a much greater curvature than at sea level. This is the calculation for sea level, which is on a larger ball, so you should be able to see more. But we're on a smaller ball now because we're down 233 feet down on the small circle. So that means with the greater curvature, this calculation is wrong. And this should be much, much farther under the curve than 13 feet. This should be more like, with the recalculation, it should be probably much more like, I don't know, 65 feet, 120 feet. Somebody who's really good at math needs to do this calculation and find the real curve for us. What are some of the other reasons you know Earth is flat and they're lying to you? So we've been going on and on about the curve going in this direction away from our eyesight, but what about the curve going horizontally because a sphere curves in all directions, not just one, right? We're not standing on a cylinder. The Chicago skyline is a whopping 37 miles long, which according to the crappy earth curve calculator, makes it 902 feet lean from end to end. That means at one end of the skyline, you wouldn't be able to see a 900 foot tall skyscraper. So standing back from this, because you know that all buildings are built level to the ground and to the center of Earth, correct? You would definitely be able to see the curvature and an entire 900 tall skyscraper leaning away from the other one. Now they're gonna claim to you that, oh, it's just so big and that's why you can't see the lean. Yet you can see the leaning tower of Pisa lean and that's only a 15 foot lean. So now what about a 900 foot lean? And you know what? If you don't believe your own eyes, take a photograph and use instruments to measure it because it's flat. So I was thinking about this in reference to looking over the salt and sea curve. So they are going to expect me to believe that a 30 foot house is gonna lean away from me so far on this curve that I'm not gonna see it anymore, but the houses behind it are gonna look like they're standing straight up. That puts the butt of the house out into outer space you should clearly be able to see the houses behind it tilting away a little if the houses in front are behind a curve so great that we can no longer see it. They're cuckoo crazy if they expect me to believe that I wouldn't be able to see these houses lean away from me. I was kind of going crazy over the idea that they keep saying gravity is the weakest force. So how the heck does the weakest force 
combat two greater forces, which is centrifugal force, which is the force of water flinging off Earth because it's spinning, and the vacuum of space. And then Josh Walker told me about a bar trick wherein a little teeny tiny vacuum in a cup, which is turned upside down, can hold in water and a card, meaning that the gravity is beaten out by this little tiny vacuum. The little tiny vacuum up there is stronger than gravity because it's holding the card up and the water up. And then I realized, oh my gosh, are you kidding me? Even my little vacuum cleaner in the closet beats out gravity because it whisks things up off the earth, including dirt and air. And gravity, no, cannot beat a vacuum, let alone a vacuum plus centrifugal force. Gravity is considered so weak that a kitchen magnet is stronger than it because it can hold up the magnet plus a paper against gravity. So how can a force which is weaker than any other force beat out two greater forces your math doesn't work again globe math doesn't work one is not greater than two plus three they're lying to you and then i had another realization as i was going past the point of no return to never being able to go back to the globe again so they claim that the earth doesn't stop spinning because it's in the vacuum of space so there's no friction at least that's what they taught me in high school even though they keep changing things and the reason they change things on you and call it a new discovery is to cover up things but anyway so if you have something in a vacuum it can just keep spinning forever right because science says perpetual motion is impossible however i realized there is actually some friction on earth it's called the atmosphere the air is not rubbing at the same rate that the earth is spinning meaning that the air is creating friction on the ground and friction is what a brake will use to stop something which is moving rapidly in other words the air itself is the brake perpetual motion or any motion is impossible if you have any amount of friction it is only possible in a frictionless environment. So this means the Earth should quickly slow down and stop spinning. I'll just touch on this one briefly because I'm going to make it into an entirely new video. But I realized suddenly, how the heck did they figure out how far away the sun is? Anyway, because they told me in high school that they did it through triangulation. In other words, they used the base of the triangle was the entire size of the orbit, and then they used that to triangulate to the sun. Well, how did they do that when they didn't know the size of the orbit? No, sir. Isaac Newton is proclaimed a genius. Yeah. He was uh, brought out for the heliocentric model to uh, explain a spinning globe concept. Well, the spinning was supposedly a thousand miles an hour at the equator. Okay? And that's the, how fast we're supposedly spinning. So he came up with what had to be something, some magical force to counteract the centrifugal force which would flung everybody off, especially at the equator. So he came up with an equal and opposite force called gravity. Now the only problem with that is centrifugal force lessens as you go up latitude. They're telling me that the centrifugal force around the globe is different based on if you're at the equator or the North Pole. Exactly. Faster or slower, because it's only heck. spinning on one radius. So as you go up latitudinally, you, you would actually be squashed by the sheer power of gravity if that was to neutralize a thousand miles an hour at the equator. And also what I realized when you were talking is that if gravity has to be an equal and opposite force to centrifugal force, how can it be if the gravity remains constant and the centrifugal force changes? It will never be equal and opposite exactly. to centrifugal. There is no centrifugal force at the very point. Right. Maybe you'd have enough to keep the air on the North Pole, but definitely not at the equator where it's spinning faster and the centrifugal force is stronger. And again, gravity is all based, as they say, on mass. Right. Mass. So it'd be the same everywhere. The mass is equal from just mass alone. So the gravity is staying constant, but the centrifugal force is not, meaning their equation doesn't work. It means it's a very limited thought out theory obviously it was designed to counteract the flaws of the heliocentric model interesting thanks rj i really appreciate it 
and these by far are not the only reasons Earth is flat, so please do your own research. And now for my response to the IIG West, ABC News, National Geographic, and anyone else who's decided to call us a menace to society. Firstly, if I am a menace to lies, involuntary enslavement, and a horrible world, then thank you for the compliment. Secondly, it's pretty pathetic that you call yourself scientists and you can't take a challenge to your theories. In fact, I've decided to claim my spot as a real, true, and rightful scientist. I just don't torture animals and I prefer to call myself an ethical discoverer and hope that I'm being ethical. But yes, we are scientists doing real experiments. And if you are unable to accept a scientist with a, an opposite theory from yours, you have now proven yourself to be nothing but a closed-minded cult group. Who says some of the stupidest things that sound like cognitive dissonance that I've ever heard. I've heard you say things like, theories are facts, and take an orange and cut the top off it. That's how you'll see that the earth is a globe. But in the spirit of classiness, that's all I'm going to say to defend myself and all of us flat earthers. You all can be the jerks and call us menaces to society and say we have fake news all you want. In order to get away from visuals, which I think Jaren is already doing, I propose we do something like this. Use a radio wave, which is proven not to bend. We can use magnets and all kinds of stuff on it to test that, which has a very small cone spread and which can be left up as a permanent thing for people to come around and check out and see the earth is flat. From then on, I'm going to personally be discovering more about food production and energy, how that's made and things like that, they'll help our world be a better place. And as my final thought before the Flat Earthers give you their two cents and we hear more fun from Ross on the beach, I kindly request that the Flat Earthers not do what the scientists are doing, which is to take one truth in your book and extrapolate it up to possibly untruths that are unproven. This is how every cult group in the world operates. They give you a truth and then when you believe them, they lie to you and you don't check into them because you already trust them. It's even a rule in the Book of Power, I think number 43 or 48. So let's please not do what we're making fun of others for doing, which is extrapolate from one little fact into a wide world of things that are completely not proven yet. I was in the military, and I was the strongest patriot that was ever around. I loved our country, I loved our government, I trusted them, I voted, I believed in what they told me, and then I realized they lied to me. I discovered Flat Earth. And then, at that point, I knew the truth. Believing in a ball is a faith, and it's flat as fuck. <laughs> I agree with that. People think flat earthers are stupid. Actually, I think you have to be smarter to be a flat earther. Not only do you have to understand the entirety of science and what they're saying, which most people don't, and you have to be smarter than them to be able to see the holes and the flaws in their arguments. So you have to be as smart as science and understand everything they're saying, and you have to be smarter than them. Basically, flat earthers are smart, very smart, not stupid. Flat earth is the proof that there's something else going on. I'm not looking to prove the flat earth. I'm looking to show the flat earth as the proof that we have other issues and things that we can address immediately. One of my goals at some point, I don't think there should be profit from um, medicine or utilities. It'd be nice if our basic needs were something that was functional and not dysfunctional. You were able to stumble upon the flat earth and be able to discern in the, the process um, and do your own scientific experiments and use your own intelligence. I admire you because you're a very brave man that are able to say, I'm a flat earther. I don't care what the consensus or ma mainstream media are claiming that where we are on. If, if they are aggressively pushing where we are, it's because they're afraid. As soon as we wake up where we are on, you can do whatever you think you want to do behind the computer, but you're really not going to know until you get out there and do some of these observations for yourself. And start with one thing, testing the curve, or uh, test to see if the, you know, the moon's light is colder or warmer. Uh, that's a good experiment that you can do and it's cheap. 
When you look at all the evidence, the truth will rise to the surface and the lies will fall away. If you can show me pr uh, proof of the globe, I'll switch back. But you know what? I haven't found it yet. The rabbit hole keeps getting deeper and deeper. I'm, now I'm a flat earther. I lost one of my best friends, a friendship of over 14 years because of the of, of our different beliefs. If it's a ball, you'll be able to prove it in three minutes or less. There's no reason why this should take a couple hours. But watch, it's gonna, call, it's gonna take a couple hours. Okay, I had debates with coworkers. Next thing you know, it's two in the morning, we're at, we're in the freaking parking lot. And it takes three hours. This should be easy. It's a ball, right? Where's your proof? It's easy to prove, it's real. If it's real, it should be provable, testable, duplicatable, measurable. Be open-minded. Just entertain the thought of flat earth. Take your time with it. Because what if it's true? Love and wisdom. Love and wisdom. If you're a firm believer that the earth is a globe, why not go and look into it, do your own research. If the earth really is round, then you have nothing to lose and you're going to come back a round earther anyway. But I can assure you that once you go flat, you never globe back. We've been indoctrinated since we were little in school. To find out that the earth is flat is a big deal because you realize that you are a divine being and that you were created perfectly. You're just living in an imperfect world. You're not a mistake and you're not a monkey floating through space as an accident. It makes you feel special. When you think that you're a mistake, you're just here to save yourself and it's not for the benefit of all, it's for survival of the fittest. And that's not cool because humanity should be looking out for each other. So it's okay if you are if you don't believe that the earth is flat. It took me a while as well. Just give it a chance. That's all I can say. I think it's like an, an incredible time to think thoughts we haven't thought before and to question what we think we know. And no matter what you start out thinking or end up thinking, the process of exploring evidence can be incredible. We went to the Salton Sea and we looked across the water and we did the calculation that we shouldn't be able to see as far as we could. It, it changes everything. It's just so amazing to see evidence firsthand. It's an incredible experience. I think everybody should just experience exploration. Who is asking you to do experiments and go find out the truth for yourself? Flat earthers or science? Who is saying, believe us and obey or you are just disrespecting us? Before you discount something, prove it right or wrong to yourself. It doesn't matter what anyone says, it matters what you're able to see, what you're able to prove, what you're able to figure out for yourself. Nobody can convince you of anything. Nobody convinces anybody of anything. I could honestly care less whether or not they're flat or they're not. I care that they seek truth and that's about it. Most of the people that are flat or they're, a lot of them dig into everything. They pull it apart, they study it. It's a little bit deeper than just flat earth. It's more of thinking about things with, the, with I guess, a discerning mind. <laughs> Basically being able to tell when somebody's feeding you a line of bullshit. I am Joseph. Flat earthers call me King Joseph. King Joseph! Um, I'm the king of nothing but everything. This type of system, this corruption, it cannot continue. And what most flat earthers do, they talk about NASA is at fault. When we should know who funded NASA in the first place. Who gave NASA the power to do these things? Who were the one that said that oh the earth is flat and then killed a lot of women and called them witches and then said the earth is a globe religion did this mainstream religion all mainstream religions that's why flat earth doesn't want to talk about i won't say doesn't want to talk about a religion but they don't want to touch the topic and religion is such a sensitive topic but at this point of time in our lives, we have to lay the cards down on the table and face fucking reality. 
because unless we face reality heads on we're not gonna go anywhere we're gonna stay in a fucking loop and I'm not gonna stay in this fucking loop so whoever doesn't want to follow me I'm not saying people could follow me y'all can do what the fuck y'all want but at the end of the fucking day I'm not gonna be deceived and I'm gonna bring children into this world and they're not gonna be deceived either you know do your best to spread the knowledge to everyone that the earth is flat to expand their consciousness and also look into the law and look into what consent is legalese is created to steal your money all these police officers and all these insurance companies they're all made to steal your money but if you understand legalese they need your consent all flat earthers need to act as the beneficiary of their own trust account meaning that they're alive they know the earth is flat and they won't be deceived and they do not give their name as in if you've ever been pulled over i don't you, you simply say this i don't answer questions am i being detained yes if they say yes what crime did i commit that i have to be detained for flat earthers should learn more about the law so they could get around and get a community because the people that control this this environment that we live in they created the law to protect themselves and they created the legal system to tax hard-working people so all you hard-working flat earthers learn the law learn that they need your consent to do anything with you without your consent which is your name don't tell them your name don't answer questions it's the law it's backed up by the first amendment i'm aaron earth aaron there's things bigger than the flat earth certain parts of this reality are so hard for us to understand I'm so afraid of it. I'm so afraid of this truth of oneness. We're afraid that if we're really just one, then we're going to be alone. In this place, in this realm, we pretend like we're different people. As long as we're doing that, we're going to be in this place. Pretending we're different people. The biggest realization is that, oh, we're just all one person acting out all these different roles, all these different characters, with all these different facets of the same the seed of creation. No matter how good the argument or the information, the best is always first-hand experience. Now, right now, you can see that laser beam as it's shooting out, right? Yeah. But the only reason you can see this green laser beam that we're shooting is because light beams, uh, photons, are bouncing, uh, well, are bouncing back at us, at our eyes. So all along the way, all along the path of this beam, it's, it's splitting off in all kinds of different directions. It's coming back towards us. It's going slightly this way, it's going slightly that way, and it's losing its integrity over time. So that's what I'm saying, is there's a lot of scattering now. All the time it's traveling in a straight line? Yeah. Well, because it's not, uh, you know, it's not a perfectly straight line, it's, it's diverging. <laughs> that was funny, the look Josh gave me. <laughs> now, if we could suddenly suck all of the air out of the atmosphere here, and we had a perfect vacuum, uh, then... Have yeah. you ever seen an example of a perfect vacuum? I have well, not. I'm, I'm, this would never so then we can't use that, can we? And no, well, I, I think that was clearly a uh, philosophical the, explanation. Hopefully well, your, your mind can the use the, uh, has big waves, the thought experiment. Well, I like thought experiments, okay. but when it comes well, to real science... Uh, no, no, hold on. That, that's kind of end of discussion. I just I gave you a thought experiment, and you can do with it what you will. But, uh, but there's no example of it. <laughs> All right, well, now you're just changing the subject. No, That's fine, you can change the subject, but the thought experiment is valid. I'm explaining why we see the effect that we see. So a thought experiment where we have to use our imagination, right? 
No, I'm, I'm I mean, engaging George, yours as well. I, I, on principles, I think you could agree with. There's a reason this is difficult. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. I, I, I agree. It's not, it's, none of this is like open and shut. Well, two weeks ago, we did not have the perfect results yeah. on both sides. Yeah, now we're not getting perfect results. Tonight, so. I believe we were not Tonight, this results. is. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. You're right. Although the moon looks really yet. pretty, though. It's so not that, over yet, you guys. That's a, that's a pro. <laughs> The smell, <laughs> we can ignore that. Telling them, no, that we, I don't care what the shape of the earth is. That's what I kept saying. Dim we have learned that many things light in that not to do, to do. Yeah. just as we did last time. And hopefully, uh, no, we're going to get to the perfect end-all experiment, we okay? Will. And it then we're going to just end this. <laughs> I guess we're rolling out stuff. That's yeah, we are, actually. Yeah.